back at it again with some more heat. How's everybody doing today? We got a sending artist with Emok today. Emok is an artist that's more so known, great vocals, R&B, neo soul. If you haven't heard of him, please give him a listen. I'm gonna leave all his links in the bio down below. One of my favorite songs by him, or I'll even put two of those on there for you. 18 and later, probably two of my more favorite songs. I discovered him back in about 2018 early when he was starting to do cover music more so. If you're looking more so for a good vibe or even if you're looking for a deeper message behind the music, I'd highly suggest listening to him. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button, be part of the Noti gang. You guys already know the vibes. Already the ninth episode, Ascending Artist with Mass Mordo, we have Emok. How you doing today? Hey, what's up? How you doing? I'm chilling. I'm happy. I was really happy when I was able to gotten connect with you. So I was like, yeah, mm. this, is, this is gonna be a good one for sure. So I'm glad. it's a pleasure to be here, man. Heck yeah. So how did you get into music? What was your like first step into the music industry? Uh okay, I've got two answers to those. So, like first time I got into music, like I mean I grew up with it. So like my mom was singing all the time and like we were at church all the time. So like church services, choirs, there's musicians, there's congregation singing like and then like when extended family got together there would be him so as far as just music being part of my life i i didn't have much say it was there from the get-go as far as the music industry is concerned that's that's been rather recent um okay. just like i was you know working on music producing it um meeting up with people here and there uh putting out songs linked up with a label called sunset waves they helped put out some of my songs um and as shoebox recordings and the MLCD. Actually, there's a lot of people who helped me. In the uh, end, so shout out to those three labels slash music blogs and the people who run them. Um, and then uh, linked up with my manager, uh, Louis Tala, who runs an artist. Uh, I don't even know what term to use for it, but like the artist company coming of age. Um, okay. And yeah, linked up with me. And we started working together and that's that's how things got started. Okay, yeah. So I know, did you ever start with like covers, like covers of songs and stuff like yeah. that? Because I was about to say, I think when I first kind of discovered you, I started hearing like some like covers more so. And that was like way, yeah. wasn't that way back or? Yeah, way, that was like, I mean, that? well, I, I guess it feels kind of way back now. Like in terms of when people started paying attention, the more it was 2018. So yeah. like, yeah, it's, it's long enough that we can say way back, I guess. 2018 i'd say way back for it so yeah yeah i mean everything feels way back before covid at this point so that's true too that's true. <laughs> everything's been funky since then so yeah man so, so i had to be getting yeah. back to a little normal normal aspect yeah, so. man. like it's it's definitely needed seeing people out and about getting vaccinated all that good stuff you know oh yeah so yeah uh who who's like your biggest music inspiration i guess you could say Oof. Or if you have a couple, go ahead and name a couple. Completely cool with that. So. You're, you're the man. <laughs> Honestly, more people should say like a couple because there's too one, many people. Yeah, yeah. that list is very long. Um, all right. So, I mean, first and foremost, my mother, just because like she was the one who had me singing, you know, different parts of harmony, like whenever we were, you know, with family and friends, like, all right, sing this part, sing that part. And, you know, it wasn't even just me. It was like my family at large like everybody yeah. went to their part so um but the importance and love for harmony i got from her and and an importance and love for like meaning and soul behind music i got from her so she's she's my biggest influence um in terms of other artists i'm a big fan of bobby mcferrin um i'm a okay. big fan of frank ocean um bonnie Bear, blind lotus um uh more or less just like folks who look like they're just doing what it is they want and what feels true to them and, and you know they're they're putting out something that's added value to people's lives you know, like those genuine people, music yeah you know and it's it's not even like like it has to be socio-political economic or whatever every time you know it could be as simple as don't worry be happy you know true. like that's added value to someone's life or what, you know what have you so those those people definitely um, shaped the perspective that I use when I like am approaching music. Yeah, and that's I feel like you can you can actually see that in a lot of, or see you can hear it in a lot of the mm -hmm. music that you put out more so. So mm -hmm. you know, so not I mean you can get kind of get shades of a lot of the people you mentioned, which is kind of nice. So right. I, I appreciate that that's coming across, you know. 
Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. What's in your rotation right now? So it's like the main songs that you've been, I'll even just throw it back to like a month or so. Like what's, what's been like heavy on your rotation? I'm interested to hear that. Mm, okay. Well, uh, uh, I, I think you actually may may have done a video on this. Like I've been listening to the off season pretty heavy. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, cause I'm also a pretty big J Cole fan. Sweet. And <laughs> so like I'm anticipating like every other fan, you know what, you know, cause he's got a good way of like drawing out his releases and making he you does. really want it. Um, uh, so yeah, like it, it, it's, you know, specifically the song, let go of my hand. I've been listening to that a lot. Okay. Um, hold on, I'm gonna check real quick. Oh, no, yeah, seconds. go ahead, pull out your phone, check it out. Yeah, I got to. I got no worries, man. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, okay, so, um, I've been listening to a lot of Giveon lately. Right. Um, and then, like, a lot of like, like a bit of J- Trey Songs and Anthony Hamilton from like 2003, 2004. Oh, okay, you know? just because it's like. I love soul music from before the 2000s, but like nobody really talks about like R&B and soul from the 2000s, I guess. So I was like, you know, I love soul samples and like how like it kind of just infected all of music for a while. So yeah, yeah, just that that era of music where like it was either super soulful or it just directly used a soul sample in a way where you're just like, oh yeah, this feels good. This feels like hip hop and church just like met and had a good time you know? collided so, yeah it's that yeah. 2000 2010 era right there yeah yeah man you know it's what i was it's where i was really learning about what i liked about music you know um okay. and then last but not least tupac but tupac is usually on rotation i don't know why like i just keep coming back to the dude there's there's certain artists i feel like that it's like you know like it, no matter what new music pops out you always have like that one person that's always stuck in rotation yeah so I yeah. feel like that for some reason, J. Cole is always stuck in my rotation. Like, no matter yeah. what, good day, bad day, whatever the case is, mm-hmm. one of his songs always pops up. So, but, but see, that speaks to my point. Like, if it's, if somebody's making something that's actually like speaking to your life and adds value to your life, then yeah, it's going to be mad easy. Like, songs Bob Marley wrote years ago, like, are still on rotation because it's like that they said something that meant something to you, you know? True. And whether it's like, all right, you're just chilling with your friends and having a good time or you had like the worst day and you needed something like, you know, they spoke to like, like their music, like that, that's the kind of music that's like a balm for like, you know, the pain of, of being, being human really. Yeah. <laughs> you think about it, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yeah. Sorry. That was mad deep, but. Oh no, yeah. you're good. I was liking it. I was liking it. You <laughs> a little deep there. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah what would you want your fans to get out of your music? So if they're listening to your music or you do, have you done any shows by chance? I've done, uh, since being in New York, I've done one. I, I won't lie. Like, uh, I personally wasn't pleased with my performance, but it was a good first experience. Cause it showed me like, okay, I need to get a lot of things under my belt. Kind of what to time. do. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So kind of going off that. So future shows and like what, what do you want your fans to kind of get out of like future shows or the music that you're putting out to them? Mm, what they need, you know, like, uh, I, I, I don't know what people come to my music. Or I, I don't know what people have in mind while they're listening to my music, you know, and I've gotten messages where folks are like, Oh, this is fun. This is just a feel good. I like driving my car to it. And then I've had messages where it's like, yo, I went through like the darkest period in my life and your music really, really helped me. And I'm like, yeah, whoa, okay. So these are two separate instances where like, whether for not that serious or like super serious, my music like is helping people to address their own lives in a way that like it's helping them live. And that's, that's what I'm looking for. Like, I'm not trying to put anything out that's just gonna make life harder for, for folks, you know, yeah. in terms of, um, taking care of themselves in a healthy way so more so yeah like you yeah because as i say a lot of the music you have is it more so like either you have that that feel good aspect to it or you're gonna have that you know deeper message behind behind the message so it's like yeah. deeper deep yeah deep, so. yeah this guy you know because low-key like after the party's over and you're headed back home like that's when the thoughts start to creep in and some people are really good at like just pushing them to the side but like i'd like to write stuff that like you don't have to push those dark thoughts to the side. You don't have to push the, 
more uncomfortable emotions to the side. You can like sit with them too, such that the next time you go to the party, you don't have to be pushing those emotions away. You can literally, literally just have a good time. Oh, yeah. Just allow yourself to deal with that stuff that's hard to deal with, you know? I was about to say, I couldn't have said that better. The thoughts after the party. So, yeah. Yo, I like man. that. I appreciate that. One artist. So, if you had to pick one artist for a dream collab, who would it be? I know there's, yeah, it's another tough one because there's like so many artists out there, but mm. who would be the dream collab for you? Uh, I don't know because like there's a lot of, there'd be a lot of pressure to make sure that like what comes out of that collab is good. So, true. I'll say like, I would love to be a fly on the wall in a Frank Ocean session Ooh. or in a Barney Ooh. Bear session. Like, like one of the two were like, you know, cause, cause the product of their work is, is music that's going to stand the test of time. Right. True. But like the process, you, you, you don't get to see how many songs didn't work out or how many ideas were this until they became that, you know, and because they've been doing it for a while, I think it would just be really cool to like learn from them and, and be present for how they troubleshoot. It'd be yeah. like awesome just to sit in on that for sure. So just like yeah. to see like everything that goes in. Like you're saying though, a lot of like Frank Ocean's, Kanye, J. Cole, Drake, yeah. whoever it is. I mean, a lot of them, their songs will just be, you know, 10, 15 years from now, we'll still be listening to it. Yeah. You know? And that's yeah. the thing. It's like the work that went into it was probably crazy crazy amount. yeah and like there's a thing like um i do think that there's like an intangible element that certain people bring to music where like just because you know all the elements that go into making a stereotypically good song doesn't mean that you'll write a song that has that impact you know True. like where like you know frank ocean, frank ocean can cover moon river and like that shit will hit your soul you know what i mean yeah where like somebody else might cover it it's like, yeah, it was good, but it didn't hit me. And it, was, it wasn't about being technically sound. It was about like, I don't know, there's something else that they put in there, right? In terms of either who they are or what they've been through or like some soul shit. Like that's that's what I would love to see, you know? And that little personal tweak. Heck they yeah. probably make me sound like an NDA. Like, yo, you can't fucking tell anyone what you've seen in this session. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you, it's like, <laughs> this is private. Like, like yeah. legit, legit. Yeah, it's like, you've seen the magic. You tell anybody, you know, we coming after you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. oh man! So, if you had to pick five songs to create the playlist of your life, or five songs you can't live with out, what would they be? Oh my gosh! Uh, Always love this question. <laughs> damn. Okay. All right. <laughs> five songs. <laughs> I answer this with the disclaimer that, like, there are many more songs that I also can't live with. Hundred percent. So. All right, uh, and this is not in chronological order. So, um, "Fix You" by Coldplay. Ooh, okay. Yeah, like that's you know I, I wish I wrote that song so bad. Like, yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, so yeah, "Fix You" by Coldplay. "Through the Wire" by Kanye West. Oh, that's a good one. That's a real yeah. good one. Yeah, yeah, man. Like that was <laughs> that was the first time I heard soul samples in in hip hop music. Oh, which oh, it's not like there weren't any before but it was the yeah. first time where i was like yo i am not a fan of hip-hop like for real like that's it's, awesome like, and and it grew from there so through the wire um lost one by jay-z okay gotta throw some yeah. jay-z in there nice. yeah got to man um 26 by paramore okay um <laughs> so many. Um, well, uh, uh, Heart of Seven Swords by Vanessa Carlton. And like with all of these songs, it's it's not that like they're the best songs in the world and like there are no other songs that can top them. But like there's a specific kind of hope that I get from each of them. And okay. uh, I was, yeah, I was about to say like you can tell like when I always ask that you can kind of like get a little bit more out of a person like you can see who like what kind of made them or kind of yeah. not made them but kind of what you know goes into what they're doing so yeah and for that's sure why I and, love that. yeah like and there's experiences behind all of them that i'm sure are behind most people's favorite songs where it's like either a conversation had or like a place you found yourself or whatever the case is and so um yeah each of those songs 
um, I'll probably be listening to on whatever form of technology we have in 2075. You know, what I mean? <laughs> who knows what that is, but yeah, for real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. What do you have? Kind of, kind of one of the last questions. Uh, but mm-hmm. what do you have coming up? for fans so what do you have ep singles albums what do you got anything special (laughs) yeah okay well um i plan on putting out a project this month i decided because there's a couple more things that i want to add to it and i'm just being a perfectionist about it i'd like to put it out next month so july 27th is when i'm going to put out a project um and then i've been working with a friend a long time collaborator named uh, Zach Ezzy on a couple of tracks. So um, those will be scattered releases over the course of the remainder of the summer and maybe the rest of the year. Um, and then I'm going to find a way to go back to some of my B-sides and have some fun with them visually because, like, I did enjoy, like, the fact that I've been putting out two tracks every month. Yeah. Um, minus this month, of course. But, like, for the most part, that's just been the case. And... You know, I want to show love to the tracks that maybe not everybody listened to. So, uh, yeah, so a couple more visuals as well. Um, and I mean, at this point, it's kind of weird saying what I'm going to do this year because I'm already thinking about next year. <laughs> so, like, like, <laughs> I'm kind of like, all right, we're mixing, we're putting the ideas together for this year, but like we're really creating and, and doing new stuff for next year. And that's that's where my head's at. So. And, you know, if people like what I do this year, um, the next year will be real fun. <laughs> Got to look forward to it. Oh, man, yeah, I bet yeah. you a lot of people are looking forward to it for sure. So, oh, yeah, you know, I'm thankful for anybody who's along for the journey, who's decided to listen, folks such as yourself, obviously. You know? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. So yeah. I I appreciate you coming on, though. Uh, you know, solid, solid interview. I was ecstatic for it. So thank you very oh, much, yeah. man. Thank you, bro. You're, no, you're the realist. I appreciate this so much. Thank you again, guys, for watching. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. Be part of the Nodi gang. We got heat dropping every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Take it easy.